a year in the primeval forest. After a long winter's sleep, nature is awakening back to life. Until recently, a monotonous cloak of white covered the ground, smothering all sounds. However, its days are numbered. The warm winds melt the last overhanging icicles, while the dissolving snows trickle into streams and rivers. silence of the fields is interrupted by the sound of returning cranes. Under the sunny blue sky, one can hear the vibrant chirping of skylarks. The first fallow deer cautiously emerge from the wood, eager to nibble on the first green blades of grass. The days are getting longer, brighter and livelier. Red deer come out as well, weary after autumn mating time and a winter of hardship. They head towards clearings where they look for fur among the last flakes of snow. Only a few months earlier, bucks bore beautiful pronged antlers. Now, with spring rapidly approaching, they gradually shed their unique adornments. Young bucks shed their antlers later than older ones and so they use these final moments to test themselves in adolescent skirmishes and clashes. The leading stag of the herd, which in autumn was the largest and strongest, has shed his antlers and now moves about in a hatched down way as if ashamed of his bald head. When the first rays of dawn appear over the forest, the black grouse starts its mating ritual called a lek. All around the forest, one can spot fighting males, strutting, running, hopping and tearing out their rivals' shiny feathers. The dark blue cocks fight ferociously, strutting spectacularly, lunging at each other and aiming at their rival's breast. When the sun is higher above the forest, the black grouse take a break in their fighting. As the day moves on, the battlefield empties, and only a few pairs continue their fighting. The last two pairs suddenly stop, almost in unison, and fly away to their feeding ground. A few warmer days have passed, and the ice starts melting. Rains have dampened the frozen earth. Inside the forest, another performance has started, the courting of the Capacale. Big as a turkey, the dark green velvety cock raises its neck, lifts its tail feathers into a wide fan and begins its courting song. The birds fly up and down, exhibiting a coughing-like sound. The song consists of four parts, tapping, drum roll, cork pop and gurgling. All of this takes place in the magnificent woodland scenery, decorated by white spring snowflakes. At 
this time the deaf Nimizirian also starts blooming, becoming one of the first colorful highlights in the still colorless forest. They are followed by the pask flower, violet with white silky hair and the liver leaf on its thin stem. The tree leaves do not block the sun yet. On top of a fallen beach, a wren has started singing its joyful and melodious song. It is getting warmer in the forest. This is the best time for plants to bloom and produce seeds. The yellow anemones have a gold-like shine in the bright sun. The wood anemones bloom white as a snowflake. The spring fumewort has opened its violet-purple petals. It is impossible to list all the plants of the forest that bloom in springtime. Here are just some of them. The chickweed wintergreen. Dentaria glandulosa, flat pea vine, common wood sorrel, Suffolk langwort, and alternate leafed golden saxifrage, which is pollinated by snails. In highland and mountain areas, one can admire the oxlip, white butterbur, snowbell and many other colorfully blooming flowers. All these flowery chalices with sweet nectar attract butterflies, bumblebees and bees. The tooth word has also appeared above the ground. This strange parasitical plant spends most of the year underneath the earth. As some plants stop blooming, others start, and the warmer it gets, the more fragrances fill the air. In damp woodland clearings, the more delightful member of the buttercup family is blooming, the globe flower. Clusters of bright yellow globe-shaped heads mixed with the verdant green of spring grass and sedges are a joyful sight in the sun. On meadows abundant with flowers, one can spot numerous butterflies, the most beautiful of which is the swallowtail. The slow worm, our only limbless lizard, has come out to search for prey. Among its many color varieties, the turquoise is the most striking, with purple spots on its back. The grass snake is our most common snake. This large female has just had its breakfast, as we can see from the bulge in the middle of its length. Grass snakes have a unique strategy of defense. They produce a foul-smelling fluid, and if this does not help, they feign death. When the danger passes, they escape into the shrubbery. Day by day, the forest is becoming more vivid and magnificent. What a profusion of ornaments! Up among the tree branches, the waving curtains made up of young leaves seem like festoons and canopies. High above, a squirrel is enjoying the juicy green fruit of the elm tree. 
there, we can also notice our only tree-inhabiting frog, the European tree frog. In a woodland swamp, a pair of cranes has built a nest. The eggs must have been laid a month ago because one of them has been cracked and a chick will hatch any moment now. When one of the cranes is sitting on the eggs, the other is on the lookout nearby and gives a warning signal in case of danger. The crane in the nest often rises and changes the position of the eggs so that they are equally warmed. Cranes do this with particular care. When thirsty, a crane drinks water without leaving its nest, and when it's time to change guard, it stretches its benumbed muscles and bones. The cranes now warm the eggs even more meticulously, and the purr takes turns in the nest more frequently. In the meantime, another pair of cranes in a different place in the forest has welcomed their first chick. As the female warms the other egg, the male teaches the chick how to receive food. As we can see, the parent must have a good deal of patience, because the young hatchling hasn't mastered this basic ability yet. On the fields adjacent to the forest, the winter crops are in full vegetation. Succulent cereals are the best feeding place for brown hair. The mating season of hares, referred to as madness, is now in full swing. The males in groups of several hares engage in amusing fights and chases. This is also the time of the grey partridges' mating rituals. Outside the breeding season they live in flocks, while in spring they form pairs to have their offspring. The male shows off in front of the female, dancing around her with raised feathers on its sides and loudly crying out. The courtship is culminated by copulation. after which the female starts searching for a good place for a nest. Beavers are very common nowadays and we can find them wherever there is water. However, they are easily frightened, thus it takes some luck to see them. In a woody thicket near a stream, boar piglets were born. Their fur is of a completely different color than their parents. The piglets are light-colored with dark stripes, which makes them almost invisible in the forest. Its mother will defend them in case of danger. Not even another female boar can approach its den, and if it does, the sow reacts fiercely and chases away the intruder. The squirrel's offspring is also starting to run about on their own. The young squirrels are hopping and chasing each other on the branches of the spruce tree. This prepares them for their future adult life.
But spring does not last forever. A new season has arrived, the time of summer duties involving the upbringing of a new generation. Thus, the second chapter of the great book of the forest has begun. There will be no more carpets woven by the golden morning sun and blue wild crocuses. The tree's green has turned to a darker hue. The branches form a thick curtain covering many secrets. Summer in the primeval forest brings many new and fascinating things to observe. With a bit of luck, we can meet a thorny but friendly mammal, the hedgehog. Like other predators, they prey on small animals. It rummages in the earth. On the treetop, we can see a tawny owl resting after a night of hunting and a young, long-eared owl, which has just left its nest on a pine tree. The sunshine is becoming more intense. The earth, grass, herbs and bushes produce a warm aroma. The morning mist has descended on the grass, turning into a million drops. The air is brisk and fresh. As it gets warmer, grasshoppers come into their own, performing a concert played by thousands of insects. The sound is produced by males rubbing their wings against their hind legs. As some of them take part in the concert, others happily munch on the fresh grass. Still others are busy mating. On the leaf of a fruit-bearing vibenum, a tree frog is waiting for prey. An unmindful fly is tasting the wet skin of the amphibian moving towards its mouth. The tree frog is very patient. Success. It's growing very hot. The scent of flowers fills the air. A light breeze carries the aroma of grass, sun-ripened raspberries and woodland strawberries. Does are looking after their young ones, feeding them and wandering around the area. They are eating the fresh leaves of young birches and juicy herbs as well. They are very alert and cautious. It's not easy to see them. The safety of the offspring is prime concern. The male deer stick together until mating season begins. They are grazing very intensively. Their antlers are well developed, but still covered in a layer of bristle velvet. In areas inhabited by wolves, deer are particularly cautious. Wolves now have pups and although they are satisfied with any prey that they can feed their offspring, they don't miss a chance to hunt for something bigger. But they are not always successful. 
the Rodia, also frequent meadows full of grass and herbs. July is mating season for them, and the roebucks keep close to the females. In a similar habitat, one can also find the hare. It feeds intensively in summer, enjoying the treats of the meadow. Boars are very alert and cautious, avoiding contact with people. Sows may only attack a man in defense of her piglets, and in these circumstances they are very dangerous. Boars live in groups called sounders. Boars forage together, looking for food in the ground. They dig quite deeply in wide areas. The piglets born during the spring still have their distinctive stripes. These stripes disappear when they are six months old. When the first gold birch leaves start falling down, the rowans disperse their coral-colored fruit that marks the end of summer and the second chapter of the Book of the Forest. Autumn mornings are not very pleasant, being wet and cold, but aren't they picturesque? The water in woodland ponds and swamps returns the heat it has stored during summer, evaporating strongly. Spider webs have formed an intricate pattern connecting herbs and roadside weeds, while drops of dew caught in the web shaped like tiny pearls strung on an invisible thread. Only now we can clearly see where spiders have spun their traps. It is on such an autumn morning that swans are busy cleaning their feathers. In the forest, on the dark festoons of spruce trees, spider webs with dewdrops look like incomparable Christmas tree ornaments. The forest, covered by the veil of morning mist, seems more mysterious than usual, more unreal. Dewdrops lying on tree branches resemble valuable jewels. When the warm afternoon sun makes the dew disappear, our attention is focused on the autumn change of colors in the forest. Above the treetops, the wind is blowing hard and plucking the colored leaves. This goes on for many days, after which the sky is blue again and the sun hands out gold rays. Is there anyone who hasn't heard about golden Polish autumn with its abundance of colors? However, autumn's beauty does not last long. After a few frosty nights, foggy mornings and rainy days, the forest is changing its appearance again. Fallen leaves form a thick, rustling carpet. In mid-September, the mating season of deer begins. During this period, bucks may wander great distances in search of does. Older bucks select several or even a dozen does and follow their own path. Younger, weaker stags often find themselves without a partner, and so they join bigger herds. However, they always stay away from the dominant buck, which does not stand any rivals. After several weeks, the fights are over and the deer disperse into the forest. 
and silence falls? Not everywhere. The swamps are a meeting place for cranes, which spend the night there before they head south. And how about that noise? Their loud trumpeting call gives a distinctive sound to the swamps in autumn. These swamps are also a favorite place for boars, which come out after dusk to the accompaniment of the Cranes concert. From up above, a goshawk is looking for prey on the seemingly barren fields. If it's lucky, it will kill an inexperienced hare. Soon, the last leaves will have fallen from the trees. It will be sad and dreary in the forest. That's where the third chapter of our book ends. The day comes when grim winter clouds hang over the forest, winds howl in the evening, trees groan at night, and then there is silence. And in the morning, the first snowflakes will fall, light as feathers. On the withered spruce and pine leaves, winter will spread its fluffy white carpet. The first snow has covered the woods and fields. Early frost has arrived. Flocks of yellow siskins fly from place to place, looking for alder seed, which they skillfully extract from cones. The warm hue of their plumage forms a striking contrast with winter's white cloak. Hard times have fallen upon deer. It's difficult to live on moss and lichens. So the deer nibble tree bark and leaf buds. Roe deer face the same ordeal. They try to uncover something to eat under the thick layer of snow. Simply walking on the frozen snow requires an effort. And in the forest, they manage just like the deer by nibbling bark and leaf buds. And birds? How hard it is for them to find nutritious and tasty food. It is so cold during the long frosty nights. The yellow hammers approach human dwellings where they hope to find food in farmyards. There are moments during winter time when the forest is engulfed in such utter silence that it seems scary. It appears strange and mysterious to us, which makes it even more attractive. Winter is an arduous time for the inhabitants of the forest. Every day is a fight for survival. Deer, roe deer, boars, until the layer of snow is too thick, can still feed on the remnants of autumn, but when heavy snowfall starts, a period of fasting starts with it. The bison, king of the forest, during frosty and snowy winters, needs the help of humans to survive, and it stays close to places where feed is handed out. On an ordinary winter day, especially when there's not much snow, the forest is not particularly attractive. But just after a heavier snowfall, when fluffy snow covers the trees, turning them into magic creations, when rime covers the dried up weeds and the sunshine makes them sparkle like diamonds, 
There is surely no sight that is equally beautiful. Now and then a gust of wind blows the heavy white cover off a branch, and it shoots up released from the weight, while the snowflakes fall and fall. One must admit that winter adorns the forest magnificently. The sun, frost, snow and winds sculpt and decorate trees, transforming them into works of art with unique and fantastic shapes. The winter trails of animals are usually limited to several paths, which are used at dusk and dawn. A naturalist can read everything from these trails very precisely. Animal tracks have various shapes and sizes. For example, her tracks consist of cross-shaped pairs of prints. Nearby we can notice a long trail of wolf tracks. Every day new tracks appear, some imposed on others, old ones covered by fresh ones all left by different animals. The further one goes into the forest, the more one can spot. On the wind-blown fields, the temperature falls even lower. All living creatures that are not hibernating dig deeper into their holes and burrows. This January blizzard against the backdrop of the setting sun is exceptionally picturesque. It is a unique kind of rugged beauty. But for the wild inhabitants of the forest, it means only trouble. So let this beauty not last too long. Winter goes on and on, but finally one day a warm wind starts blowing from the south, knocking down the frozen snow from the trees and melting all the tracks. Winter's magic spell comes to an end. The forest sheds its last remaining winter attire and chirping chickadees, blackbirds and starlings dance joyfully, welcoming the arrival of spring.